In this section, we're going to move into a more specific accounting topic, namely inventory. Now, we're going to break the inventory discussion into a few different sessions. The first session is just a high-level overview of the difference between the periodic and the perpetual inventory systems. So, inventory. We have to know what does that company sell? What are they in the business of selling? It's going to depend on that particular company. The example I like to give is Walmart or any large retail store or manufacturing, or I'm sorry, wholesale firm. Uh, basically, they may have a forklift in their back room that they use to load and unload stuff. That forklift to them is generally not inventory because they're not in the business of selling forklifts. However, to an equipment dealer, that forklift would be inventory because that's what they are in the business of selling. So it depends on what company you're looking at. For our accounting entries, we need to be able to track the selling price of that inventory and how much cost we had for the inventory. Hopefully we sold it at a higher price. Otherwise, we're not going to be in business very long. But we need to track both items, the revenue and the expense. As an example, we have a company that purchases inventory for $60,000, sells it for $100,000. The markup is $40,000 on that inventory. Now, if you want to look at a percentage, uh, $40,000 profit divided by the $60,000 that we originally uh, had to pay for it, that's a 66.67% approximately markup. So first of all, we need to know when do we make these journal entries. With inventory, it starts off as an asset. When we purchase this inventory, it's on our balance sheet as an asset. Over time, as we use it up, as we sell it, it's going to be converted to an expense, namely cost of goods sold. So again, the question is when do we make this transaction to move it from inventory asset to expense? Do we do it immediately when we sell it? Do we track it as it gets sold? Or do we do it one big time at the end of the period? And that depends on what particular system this company uses. If they use the perpetual inventory system, they would do it perpetually, ongoing, every transaction. So when we talk about a perpetual inventory system, we're generally talking about a company that has a barcode scanner. So as they sell a product, it gets scanned out and the computer keeps an updated record of what they have and what is now gone because they sold it. So in a perfect world, a perpetual inventory system would give you a, an ongoing inventory. You know at any point in time how much of product A you had left, how much of product B you had left. Behind the scenes in your computerized accounting records, it's going to record the sale in other words, the revenue, and it's also going to record the expense, the use of that inventory. We'll see the journal entries in just a bit. The periodic inventory system, the only thing that gets recorded at the time of sale is the sales revenue itself. We know that because we're selling it. We have a cash register. We can ring that up, but we don't know for sure how much inventory we have left. We don't update the inventory records after every transaction. It's not perpetually done because it's a periodic inventory system. Periodic inventory systems work fine for companies that don't have large quantities of individual items. They can track them pretty easily. They can look out on their shelves and get a pretty good idea of what they have. But for larger stores that have hundreds or thousands of each in inventory item, they need more detail to know when they need to reorder. So a perpetual system is good for them. The sales entry just by itself would be a debit to either cash, if it was a cash sale, or possibly accounts receivable. If you sold it on account, you're going to collect later. They're both assets. The credit would go to sales revenue to record the $100 that we sold this for. It's revenue. We've earned it. That's what we're recording here. The expense entry would be a debit to cost of goods sold, 
which is an expense, even though the word expense is not in the name. It's a debit to cost of goods sold to increase it. In this case, it was $60 per item. And the credit goes to inventory to reduce that asset by $60 as well. So after all the sales we have throughout the period, we could have an income statement looking something like this. This is just an excerpt. We have our sales of $100,000 minus the cost of goods sold of $60,000 gives us remaining gross profit of $40,000. Now, gross profit is a subtotal. It's not the bottom line. It's not net income. We still have a lot of other expenses to cover. This is just after subtracting out the one big expense, cost of goods sold. So if we have a perpetual inventory system, they're going to do both of those journal entries at the same time. The sales entry and the expense entry, every transaction would have both. So you'll see them merge together. In this case, I separated them out intentionally, but in, in an actual journal, you would see them merge together. Keep in mind, the higher price is generally the selling price. The lower amount is generally the cost. Again, otherwise the company is not going to be in business very long. Periodic inventory, we're still going to have that sales entry, but we will not have an expense entry at that time. Instead, we'll have one big expense entry at the end of the period. The way we calculate that, is we, we figure out how much must we have sold. So we start off with beginning inventory, which is last year's ending inventory. We did a physical count last year. We know how much we had, and it moves over to January 1st of this year. It's our beginning inventory. We add in any purchases we made because obviously we've bought more inventory. That adds to what we have that we could sell. When you add those two together, you get what's known as cost of goods available for sale. Throughout the period, we could have sold all of these items, $1,900 worth of items but we didn't sell all of them. We have some left in ending inventory. So we have to subtract out the ending inventory that we have physically counted. We know we have a thousand left. If we had 1900 and now we only have a thousand left, that remaining 900 must be what we sold. That's our cost of goods sold. So this is how at the end of the period, a company would do their cost of goods sold entry. They do one for the entire period instead of smaller entries after every sale. So we will continue on with the discussion of inventory in the next section, but this gives you an overview of what to expect.